Good day everyone! So I hope you are enjoying the Foundation Week and for today we will be discussing our first lesson for the fourth quarter, so the last quarter. Alright, so congratulations and I hope you continue doing your best till the end of the quarter. So if you are ready, let's have our first lesson for the fourth quarter. And here is our first topic. So we have the Indian epics. All right. So India is the land of famous folklores and classical literature. And we will be talking about the two famous folklores of India, which are the Ramayana and the Mahabharata. Okay. So they are written in ancient Sanskrit and present the most common ideals of civilization. So let's find out what is about Ramayana and the Maharabata. Okay, so Ramayana is written by Maharshi Valmiki known as Adikabi, the first poet. And this epic tells about the life of Rama. It is one of the most read and famous epics of all times. Also, it is highly respected by every Hindu and recorded as a holy book. So just a quick review, epics are long narrative poems based on oral tradition. So they tell about the heroic exploits or events of a hero under supernatural control. Alright, so let's have the characters of Ramayana. And here are the characters in Ramayana. First we have Dashrata. He is the king of Kosala. Next, we have Kausalya, the eldest queen, the mother of Rama. Next, we have Vishnu, a deity. Vashista, a priest. Vishwamitra, a revered sage. Next, we have Ravana, a powerful king of Rakshasa, an island of Ceylon, south of India. Next, Janaka, a saintly king who received the bow of Lord Siva. And Sita, a daughter of King Janaka and uh, the wife of Rama. Alright, and for the summary of the story, let's all watch the video on the next slide. Our story begins in the glorious kingdom of Ayodhya which was built on the banks of the river Sarayu. At this time, Ayodhya was ruled over by a wise and wonderful king named Dashratha, who was loved by one and all. His subjects were happy and his kingdom prosperous. However, all was not well within the palace. The king himself was sad, as he had no hire to succeed him. Although he had three wives, none of them were able to bear him a son to inherit his throne. On the advice of his royal chief priest, Vashista, the king decided to perform a sacred rite to appease the gods for a son. The sacred rite was performed, and indeed the gods were pleased. From the sacred fire, a radiant form emerged, who presented the king with a golden vessel. The king accepted the gift joyfully and shared it with his three queens, Kausalya, Kaikai, and Sumitra. In time, each of his three wives gave birth to sons. Queen Kausalya gave birth to a son called Rama. Queen Kaikai bore a son named Bharata. And to Queen Sumitra, the gift of twins, Lakshmana and Shatrughana was bestowed. The king was ecstatic and from every lane and by-lane in the city, shouts of happiness echoed across the land. The kingdom of Ayodhya rejoiced at the wonderful news. 
The four young princes grew in age and wisdom. They were intelligent, handsome, and they loved one another. It was soon obvious that as the princes grew, Rama and Lakshmana shared a special childhood bond with each other. The years rolled by. One day, sage Vishwamitra came to the palace, seeking a favor from King Dashrata. He requested the king to send his beloved son Rama into the Dandaka forest to destroy the Rakshasas who were constantly disturbing his sacrifice of fire. Rama had just turned 15 and it sat in the king's heart to send his innocent young son into the forest. However, the king decided to allow Lakshmana to accompany Rama on this journey with sage Vishwamitra. The journey to the Dandaka forest was long and difficult. <coughs> Suddenly, there was a loud sound. A strange looking creature called Tadaka rushed towards them. It was huge with an enormous head and a hideous face topped with thick black hair. It also had dangerously long sharp fingernails. Rama skillfully aimed his arrow into Tadaka's heart and killed her instantly. The gods in heaven were pleased. The three of them continued on their journey deeper into the forest. Along the way, Rama and Lakshmana killed many demons. Vishwamitra was so pleased with them that he invited the young princes to accompany him to visit King Janaka, the neighboring king of Mithila. King Janaka of Mithila had a beautiful young daughter, Sita. He had always wanted Sita to marry the bravest and strongest man there was. To prove his strength, this man would have to string the great bow given by Lord Shiva. Many suitors had tried to string the great bow and had failed. None of them could even move the bow, let alone string it. However, when Rama entered the courtyard, things changed. He picked up the bow with ease and bent the bow to string it. To the surprise of the thousands of people gathered there, the bow snapped in two. First, there was disbelief. Then everyone stood and chanted, Rama, Rama, Rama. The king was overjoyed. At once he informed Rama's father, King Dashrata, about this good news and began making arrangements for the marriage in his palace. Rama and Sita were joined in a grand marriage. At the same time and at the same place, Rama's other three brothers were also married. After the wedding, sage Vishwamitra blessed each of them and left for the Himalayas to meditate. King Dashrata returned to Ayodhya with his sons and their new brides. For the next 12 years, Rama and Sita lived happily in Ayodhya. Rama was very popular and was loved by all. of our lesson for today so be ready for our live discussion on wednesday again this is teacher mitch goodbye everyone have a nice day